Basic Miss Dean, boy, we got the multi platinum seller artist, Mr. Sir Vaughn in the building. What y'all know, what y'all know. We done brought Pac Man around a in the God series. Now you know what it is. <laughs> you know what it is, man. Wow, what's up with you, big homie? It just got gangster. What you what you say, man? Right. <laughs> now look, now look, I always start to show up like this. I hey look, we we bring it uh we bring in our superstars to Route 8. Man, if Ohio don't know you, they gonna know you after this. Yeah. Man, Mr. Serbo sure. number one. He's he's a multi-platinum selling yeah. artist. Yeah. I mean, he didn't did songs with Pun. He didn't did songs with Brother yeah. Lynch. He didn't did stuff with Master P. Yeah. But not only that, yeah. this is one of the realest niggas in the in the motherfucking it's, music it's, business. It's really I'm gonna say this Can for we get a me for, that? Let's for get real. A for that. Can we get a for that? This is my big brother right here. This this is my OG right here. Mr. Servo, man, I'm telling you, ever since the first day I met this dude, man, it, he oh, man. taught me about the business, and 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 he didn't kept it real, man. Most people is is lames and they lying in the game, they 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 bullshit, and they don't never keep it real, man. This man ain't did nothing but kept it real with me from day one. No, he and I and I appreciate you for Honestly. that, man. And I think you uh don't get your credit you deserve, man. I think you did did that for hundreds of artists. Yeah. And, and and they need to they need to go on and give you your credit, man, because you don't have to do that. You don't have to step down nah. and, and help help the youngest, but you do that, man, yeah. from uh posting people from New Orleans music on your page, from just just talking the, the countless talks. And I know you talk to more artists than just me. Yeah. Man, you you really deserve your flowers, man. Facts. You really deserve your flowers. And I, I definitely appreciate that, man. And um, you know, the you know, it's 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 beautiful to hear it from, you know, artists such as yourself that are are striving and man and, and being successful, even though y'all 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 about to get to levels that's gonna be crazy, you know. And I do wanna tell y'all, man, that I'm extremely proud of y'all. You know, Thank you. Yeah. first Thank you. time we talk to watch how business minded you but you guys have become. And then even with my sis, man, people don't know, they see the pretty hair and the pretty face, you know. <laughs> I hate when people look at her. And say, yeah. oh, but what's up with Miss Dean? Man? You know, nah, nigga, don't worry about that. <laughs> right. And the old man will whoop your ass, but you know, they don't they don't know you a G. And this, <laughs> yeah. Hey, sir. To see how you <laughs> no, nah, to see how you what y'all don't know out there, man. Look, I think if you if just me and her was standing in the hotel probably waiting for T Vix to come in the lobby and somebody say something to me, she'll punch in your shit. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't let the nice clothes. Well, is that obvious? I'll be trying yeah, to I didn't saw your anger. She a G. <laughs> For you to be so mature now, have matured in such a short time, man. You wasn't immature. You you just was no nonsense. You know, you just mm -hmm. kind of, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it, it's a beautiful thing to see and to see both of you guys do something that don't happen in this industry. When you're two artists in this industry, y'all are married you know in love got each other back you know what i'm saying no matter what y'all go through y'all still there when this industry tears people apart but yeah. you know what that's why i want to say too you know that's why i spoke when we spoke and i told you you know how we feel about it and just we appreciate you bro like even pulling me to the side on some of them shows and giving <laughs> me some game like look sis <laughs> that, that, you know that go a long way because you know a support system is so important not only in this industry but in marriage you know if we want to yeah. flourish if we want to do great like you have spoken nothing but positivity on us and yeah. i just want you to know from me also once again we appreciate you for that because yeah. I mean, that go a lot that that go far with me yeah because I saw, I saw the potential and i you know y'all yeah. already talented as rap artists you know and 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 especially you know like vic is laid back and 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 you it was like go to zero to 100 and i'm like she got it she got it she got to get it together and they can go so far man and look yeah. look where you guys are at and and you know you know it's 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 beautiful for me to see you know because just you know getting to know you guys and 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 wanting to help you know just as much as you guys help me you know at times or whatever when i would things but being able to help and advise you guys and to see what y'all have built, you know what I'm saying? Being to see it from ground up, like, yeah. oh, 
y'all invest in yourself, man. Y'all, y'all will travel. Y'all will do what needs to be done. Y'all answer the phone call if needed, you know, and that's rare in this game. So outside of giving me my accolades, man, y'all learn, y'all better learn to take that pat on the back. Well, you know, know I we take it. We gonna take, take that. I'm gonna take it. I appreciate that. But this ain't about us today. Yeah, it's about you. It's about you today. It's about you today. And well, I, well, we want to say that too, because man, for real, I don't know if we do it enough. You know, because a lot of the a lot of the talks we talk, you giving up the game, and we receiving it, and then we going to apply it. Mm -hmm. But then a lot of times that we say, "Hey, man, bro, we appreciate you, man. You ain't have to do this. You ain't have to invite us out to this tour. You ain't have to take us here. You ain't have to introduce me to that guy. You ain't have to do this." Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, man, for real, we really do appreciate it, man. You I want to say this though too. So we talking about the OG, Mr. Servo. Let's yeah. talk about the journey. Let's talk let's, about the journey. Let's, let's, let's go back. To the let's journey. go back. Let's think Let's let's oh, talk man. about what this sculpture you and it made you. Let's talk the about OG the white, the white meat. Become. Let's talk about the white meat, <laughs> Mr. Servo. You know, what I mean? <laughs> talking about, talk about the beginning. I'm 22, so what yeah. started the Mr. Servo career? First off, what was your first project where you felt like you were actually being looked upon as a serious artist? Yeah. Um, to be honest. You know, and, and it's going to be, and it might make you guys say, like, man, is he serious? I just really realized, and me and KL was talking about this about a year ago, the beauty of the internet, because the internet is the gift and the curse. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. the beauty of it made us look like, yo, we really legends. We really did something. Mm -hmm. so, because now your people is right there. They could talk to you. And mm -hmm. when you get thousands of, man, you did this and you did that, man, you're a legend, man. Yeah. You want the best. You know, I appreciate what you've done and this and that. It really made me sit back and say, damn, I really did something. Mm. Oh, so for me, it's still nonstop B because, you know, like I made an impact. Mm. So I know I've made an impact in, in, in artists' lives and things like that. You know, and, and, and even average nine to five workers' lives, people that I've helped, you know, have been there for, you know what I mean? Yeah. It raised me to be that way. You know, and it could be the gift and the curse, you know, but I think honestly, like, you know, for me, I think I'm about to get to that point of saying, okay, when I knew that mm. it'll be that one, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm learning now to separate and call my own lane. You know what I'm saying? I'm still no limit forever. TRU blood and blood out to the casket drop, you know, but it's, it's a matter of, even you've even told me, Vic, like, yo, you went off on that song. Yeah. Being me, you know, when it's when it's late in the career where I'm like, okay, everything I'm putting out now, I'm leaving words for the world. Not saying I'm going anywhere anytime soon, but it's like, okay, now you really gonna get who I really am. You focus more on legacy at this moment. Yeah, yeah. I, let me let me say this. Let me say this. Bro, you raised a generation. <laughs> Yeah. You ran people, hold up, you know. Some people had cable, HBO, right. and we some had, we had no served. limit. We so, had no limit, yeah. man. I, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, man. Y'all raised a generation, mm -hmm. and I and, and maybe people ain't telling you enough, man, but you really raised a generation, man. It's like, you know, when we like when y'all came out, I was in school, man, and, and, and all I wanted to be was a soldier. Uh -oh. You know what I mean? That's it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So y'all gave us purpose, y'all gave us direction, y'all gave us you know what I'm saying? Y'all gave us all of the whole structure we need. If daddy was at work and working, we still had no limit to every week coming out with some new mo game to give us. You know, if yeah. you raised a generation, man, you did something that's bigger than the record sales. You got all the record sales, but you did something bigger than the record sales. You really impact people's lives, man. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. We, I, think, I think because P kept us in, in a humble way. You know, we were free to be and do whatever we want. Not like you hear about most labels. They can't do this. The artists can't do that. You know what I'm saying? We did however we wanted to. But the one thing that it kept us so humble, like we we came as we had a job to do. You know, we wasn't at a party. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. Don't, don't get me wrong. I got in trouble. You know, because <laughs> I was known for, for after shows, taking the van. And going <laughs> finding the hood club so I could just go chill or whatever would not. But I think that's why I think we sometimes don't realize our impact because yeah. you know we really just you know what I'm saying. You know we just really was just somebody you know that was like 
we was for the average guy. And I always say this with, with, with like us and cash money. And, you know, of course I love my, my, my fellow city brothers, you know what I'm saying? They label, you know, but they were for the guys that wanted to party, pop bottles, run around our females. You know, we was always from what P said, we for the dude that got the cutlass with one speaker and the dude that's, that's yeah. got, that's out there trying to make pamper money. Got just enough to get them pampers and get our CD, yeah. you know, and then we keep him going, the hustle going and, and keep his mind right. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I think when you do it that way, we was the nine to five workers in, in, yeah. in rap. Worked everybody and we constantly worked and we was regular. We didn't hide. You know, we didn't feel like, OK, I'm going to be sitting over here with this rapper who's selling and that rapper was selling. You know, we was out, you know what I'm saying, around regular people. You know what I mean? And I think that's the way we were because we didn't fear our fans, so to say, like most rappers, like, man, I ain't hanging with yeah. this, that and that. Yeah. So we believed in, you know, if they buy our music and, they, you know, they got to be, you know, we got to be able to reach us. You know what I'm saying? And right. I think that's what made us really never look at our impact until we go to shows and yeah. use people and they're sitting there telling you, like, yo, bro, heaven is so close. Dude, I, I didn't want to be in this world, man. But then... yeah. I remember when we went to a show, bro, and I don't know if you remember that dude walked up to you and he had a picture of you. He, he yeah. painted it. He had painted it. He had yeah. you to sign yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was like, like wow, that. you know, that was amazing to see that type of reaction. He was like, man, I love you. You impacted me. I want you to please sign this picture. And I was like, man, that was so dope, you know, to it's, even share that it, moment, you know. You know, it, it humbles you, man, because when you really look at it, you know, and I always live by pop. In words where you say only my, you know, when, when all the lights and screams scatter, only my dreams matter. Because when you come into this and, and then tell me if I'm alive, yeah. you know, you, you, you don't dream of money. You, the money be for, man, I won't get my mama straight. I won't get my kids straight. Right. True. My girlfriend, everybody to be okay. But I just won't be the best to ever do it. So mm -hmm. we legacy coming in with the money is for, family and you might do a little something for yourself here and there like you know what i want that car whatever but you still deep down inside like i want the world to hear me i want them to know me i want mm -hmm. i want to be the one that they never forget exactly and, Say, that, and dc can you please can you please put the put the the claps on this man we is talking to yeah. the this is the greatest record label of all time right here yeah. this yeah, is no definitely. women records can we can we clap that up one time definitely, that? Definitely, man definitely. this is crazy i mean I, and it's crazy that y'all didn't notice it because y'all were just working y'all had your head in your work i remember yeah. talking to kale one day and he said the same thing to yeah. me when he was in the hotel he's like man i really didn't under you know mm -hmm. i'm just working you know what yeah. i mean yeah, and it's it like was. it's crazy to hear all y'all say that man because y'all was top of the world i remember uh I'm about it, you know what I'm saying? I, I, the Pac-Man yeah. reference. I have my mom going to every store trying to buy the, the, you know what I mean? Trying to buy the movie. We couldn't find it, but it was one mom and pop store that had it. It was sold out everywhere. And my mom cussing me out like, boy, we ain't going, just go to one more store. And you know, like, we don't, I don't need no lunch money. I need the no limit thing, you know what I mean? And, and what's so ironic that I'm finally putting the Pac-Man album out, and you on the Pac-Man song. The, <laughs> right, right. The, the, the lead single. The That's lead. So we single. cheating a little bit. We cheating a little bit. We know, sir. We love, sir. But we gotta go back to your That's whole what I was gonna thing. Say. We, we gotta a little start bit. from the beginning where I was gonna okay. say because we talked right. about life insurance. Life insurance, insurance. No, we gotta go to life life insurance insurance. for a second because I want to know this because yeah. before life insurance, apparently you and Master P was high school boys. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the beginning of you entering into No Limit because you were one of the first artists that yeah. were that was signed to No Limit. Yeah. So let's yeah. talk about that. Let's talk about your relationship and uh, also how that happened. Um, you know, long story short, you know, growing up, you know, basketball was everything to me. You know what I'm saying? I I, I dreamed of basketball before music, and and you know, and it wasn't like some of these rappers you see out here. They'd be at the little all-star games and they they make a shot and they're like oh nelly could play ball and quavo could play ball you know and i got respect that's my brothers you know what i'm saying but we played for real 
you know what I'm saying? And so it was about dreaming of getting the college scholarship. And P was actually the number one point guard in, in, in the state of Louisiana. And that was my bro. So his brother, Kevin, you know, I used to follow, I used to, me and C used to follow P to go to whatever court he'd be at. And P would follow his brother, Kevin, God bless the dead. And, you know, so we would always, wherever P was playing at, you know, me and C would follow and be there. And then when C was running around, I would just be wherever P was at playing ball. And so, and then the grammar school I went to, which was like known for basketball, you know, I was going there for like a half scholarship from third grade on, you know, because I was that good. And, you know, whenever I come out of school, P and now his ex-wife, Sonia, you know, that's when they were beginning to date before there was a Romeo or anybody. He would always mm -hmm. be sitting on her steps across the street from my grandma <laughs> school, you know, and watching us practice and stuff like that, basketball and you know, telling me things I should be doing. So you played basketball too. So you was a beast at basketball too. I put it like this: I didn't even play my senior year, and I still had scholarships to D one school. What? And I, you know, so y'all was really y'all was gonna be a dream team regardless. See, either be, was gonna do music <laughs> or sports. See, it was up Ms. to y'all. Miss Dean, trust me when I say this: ain't no rappers. Only maybe a few I can name that I know really had game, like Cameron, Dave East, you know, uh, what's the uh, light skin kid? I love his I love his music. Oh man, I ought to be ashamed of myself. J. Cole, you know, a few of them had some nice game, right? Cameron can who? Yeah, Cameron. Huh? Cameron, Cameron was a beast too, yeah. Oh, Cameron, boy, Cameron was a beast. Cameron, <laughs> cool and That's crazy. he got put out of college in Texas. Cameron was a beast. Okay. You know, and then I'm gonna make you laugh. Baby from Cash Money was a beast. <laughs> no, no, R baby, we played AAU together, play, uh, park ball together. Baby was a point guard. He don't seem like he got the height. He, he, I know he never talk about it, never. No, he had handles. What? Yeah, I'm telling you, he had handles. Well, T. Vince was a beast too. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> I don't let out. Know, I that. Play basketball. You know, but, but no. We we I was, came up with LeBron James, you know what I'm saying? Was, so we, hey, we, hey, 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 don't the king, the king, baby. No. Yeah, I came up in that you era. Know how, we, you know how I feel about the king. Yeah, but, yeah. So we, let's talk about your first appearance, which was on Soldier Slim, right? Soldier for Life. On Soldier for Life on Soldier Slim album? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, that was back then, man. But really, my first, um, and it's funny, man. I I, I don't I don't trip about saying it now. You know, before my name was served on, it was C Rock, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and laugh. <laughs> you said we could, bro. You just gave me permission. Yeah. I'm and like, what? I ain't not what? When yeah, that happened? I did KL first song he did for me was um a song gotta get my serve on. And that was the song that P heard, oh, you know, on a cassette. Mm -hmm. You know, we was we ended up and I was with KL in my first performance was at a you know of course i was on slim you know album and then uh we performed one night with juvenile joe mm. black uh and soldier slim mm. and kl just like you performing tonight i'm like what i never performed in my life he was like just just i got your back just you know your lyrics just roll with me and so, so how did you and kl get so tight well mc dart who is is like an idol of mine, is a legendary MC Dart from New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? MC Dart, I'm gonna see who I would. MC Dart was like a Nas. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And uh, him and KL had the group 39 Posse. KL them was city legends, you know, uh, 39 Posse, yeah. you know, in New Orleans. And so when I came home, you know, from the university, you know, I was got put out of school, got put out of college for, selling weed oh, so lost my scholarship then i ended up in the military so i wouldn't have to do no years in jail then i got put out the military three days before i got out and they sent me to that university in levensworth kansas you mm. know what i'm talking about right the university mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what the university yeah, talking yeah about. i know yeah. what you're talking about <laughs> so and once i came home you know my brother was like you know they're gonna kill you out here man you you getting into some new orleans ain't the same just mm. go to school. Why don't you go back and play ball? Because I was going on college campuses and killing they 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 school. Any mm. player at Xavier Dillard killing them. And so, you know, I was gonna go to I went to Suno. 
and I was taking music. And one day I decided at the UC to battle MC Duck and got my ass bust. Mm. You know mm. what I'm saying? And so he needed a ride home. And, you know, I still was, I was in that mode of hustling. So, you know, that nice car and whatever. And I bring him, he said, bring me on, you don't want me, you want me KLC? I'm like, you serious? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. So he bring me to the parkway and KL sitting in there, dog walking there, said, man, I'm about to go home. He rapped, I want you to check him out. And KL looked up, looked back at me and kept working. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, sound like him, yeah. Yeah. sound like him. <laughs> about 10 minutes later, he turned and said, spit something for me. So then I tongue twist like bone thugs back then. Yeah. And so I'm just flowing. He said, you know, he said, give me 16 balls. So I, I I was just rapping for about three minutes straight. And he was like, stop. I was like, what? And he was like, you can't rap. And I look, I I got gun on me, everything. About $4,000 in my pocket, real talk. About to like, risk it all, huh? And I'm looking at him like, I could buy your life right now. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like you, you playing with me in this little bitty ass, you know, place, mm -hmm. and you know, and but I'm, I'm, I'm more smarter than the, to go off. I'm sitting yeah. there looking at him mad, and I'm like, it ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? You know, because my uncle, when I first came down, my cousin, he was a big time manager. I rapped for him. He said that'll never work. Mm -hmm. So not KL and told me I'm like that's two strikes, but I'm not gonna quit. Right. So I'm about to walk out. He said, No, you don't. I told you kick sixteen balls. You've been rapping for three minutes. Mm. <laughs> you need to mm. learn what balls are. You know what balls are? I'm like, no. <laughs> you know, I'm telling them the only balls I know that you plan to get a drink. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, and gold balls, that's about it. You know? Yeah. I mean? And so he was like, no. And he, he, he said, I'm going to teach you. He said, you got a nice floor. I'm going to teach you. And it's different. Where you from? I said, I'm from uptown. He said, you sound like you're from the East Coast. I said, no, I, I lived there for like four years and that's where I really learned to rap. And so we start feeling like, we start seeing we had a lot in common, mm. you know, like North Carolina basketball and and we watched Fred Sanford. And so at night we had a routine, you know, I go hustle during the day, doing what I do, you know, school and hustle. And then, you know, come by him, we work a little bit. Then we'll stop and go play basketball at 12 midnight. Mm. And it's you know because KL balled a little bit you know he can ball he can handle his business but then we come back watch Speed Racer you know for y'all that that's too young y'all don't know what Speed Racer is yeah. <laughs> but you know and better yet I'm gonna tell you guys people go buy Bugattis the way yeah. the Bugatti the way it's built that was a car in Speed Racer mm. it yeah. really was a car like the mm. super car right but so we come back and then we work till like two, three in the morning. And then we'll go eat together, you know, at this spot called Anita's. If you listen to my first album, mm. Life Insurance, I said, go to Anita's after four, see all the bras you used to before, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, we got close in that manner, you know, and it was like, it was crazy because I had a daughter the same age as his daughter, mm. you know, and so we would work and then, you know, he didn't like the idea. I got into a new hustle. It wasn't, it wasn't drugs. Mm -hmm. I got into the corporate federal thing, mm -hmm. credit, credit cards and checks. Mm -hmm. you no, know, and so that's where the serve on thing came from because I built up a whole situation where UPS drivers working for me, mm -hmm. people working in the bank for me. You had a whole organization. So, so, we running in foot lockers like at that time, like I oh y'all always like wearing Jordans. Mm -hmm. Y'all old enough when the Jordans was really coming out the first time, right? Mm -hmm. So I was that person. Like, if y'all like Jordans, you come tell me how many pairs you want. Mm. And I'm a half. I'm gonna go to Foot Locker. Oh, man. I, I wish hey, look, yeah. I wish it was that plug now. I was trying yeah. to get some cool graves. Hey. They first came out a few yeah. months oh, ago. No. It was had hard. Up. They had police escorting the shoes out. The Jordans ain't nothing had to play with. Up, like, but you know, I wanted to say this though. I wanted to stop him and say this though. I applaud you for what you said when you said uh you was in this when you went to the studio with KLC and you had a strap on you and you also had some bread on you, but you reacted in a different way, more maturely yes. to an insult. I respect that because I remember when we went to New Orleans and we shot our video down there with you. 
uh, still in the struggle. Mm -hmm. And everybody in there had bullet wounds. Everybody in there had a story that they had been shot, damn mm -hmm. near killed. And it's like, it's so it's so powerful hearing you say that because I know where you come from. And yeah. that's, the cra that's the crazy part about it too. Every time, a lot of people ask us about still in the struggle because that was our first video to do a million mm -hmm. views. Yeah. So I always tell the story about when you took us to the studio and everybody was talking about they I got shot story. Everybody got shot. Oh, I yeah. Almost, I nope. almost felt like somebody had I'm to shoot me. Like, I'm damn, I need to get shot to feel at home. Yeah, because it, it was wild on there. And, and, and then what you guys didn't realize is, you know, and this is when you carry yourself a certain way, not saying, oh, man, I'm this gangster, whatever. It's about carrying yourself in, in, in a mature gangster way. We were really downtown. I'm from uptown. We yeah. don't make it. Right. You know but not because of music, I was able to come down there because when I was doing what I was doing between basketball and then hustling, I didn't say I'm going to only deal with my area. Mm. I went mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. And mm -hmm. people remember that so I can go everywhere and do things or whatever and, and they're not going to trip. You know, and I understood the, the territory of it of like, I'm going to establish something with these dudes downtown. And Ace was like a little brother to me, the studio y'all was at, you know, mm -hmm. and all of them was downtown dudes. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to say one thing about that, too, that experience. I mean, if it wasn't for you and, uh, you know, Ace, that's the one thing that uh, that I had never seen doing a feature. You know what I'm saying? We did the song, Still in the Struggle, and, like, these dudes, they not even on the song. You know what I mean? But on the social media side, man, they shared that nice. thing. They post like, that it thing. Like it was that. like, it was, yeah. it, you know, it was like, man, and they, they like, they counting it with me. We like five hundred thousand views. Yeah. They like, oh, we we popping at yeah. five hundred thousand views, yeah. and they sharing it again to their people, and that and that's the one thing I think yeah. uh, that helped that record do what it did. You know what I mean? Because it was uh, like it was total effort, the total everyone. effort from everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was. And you did your thing on it for sure, and we did our thing. It was a beautiful situation. Oh yeah, man. It was it was it was a good thing. You know. Yeah. But we got to go back to life we insurance. We ain't to, never did life we're insurance. To we such an established artist right now. Yeah, it, I mean, so much. From but, high school, boom, you got in with P, boom. Now we done hit life Paris insurance. So just slim, boom. Let's do life insurance. Been insurance true, please. no limit. Life insurance, the next level. But let's talk about life insurance right yes. now. The classic, uh, you know, to me. And hold on, my, life insurance. Let me just speak some numbers right here. Number twenty-three on the charts. Number five on R&B. Twenty on the no, uh, no limit list. You don't really t hit some charts. You don't really did some numbers with this album as well. And this is a fan favorite album. I mean, from the album cover to all the music to Brother Lynch featured on it to songs with you and Pete. I mean, like, what was it like creating the life insurance album? It was pressure. You know, because I know mm. I was different from everybody. I didn't mm -hmm. grow up in that New Orleans circle of music. You know what I'm saying? The Mias, the Fiends, the KLs, they all was friends. They grew up in that scene. You know, mm -hmm. I was the outsider to, to them in so many ways. Mm -hmm. You know, and so for me, it was like I knew I was different. You know, my you know, my my words would, would be New Orleans wise, but my rap style was East Coast. And so it was a mixture. So I knew I was different. But for me and KL, it was like, we're going to give them something different, you mm -hmm. know. And, and then No Limit was starting to pop then. And, you know, and I got to thank E-40 because No Limit what? was, we saw 40 once and P was letting him listen to some stuff. And P was like, who that is? And on the song, Fuck a Dead Man. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and P said, that's him. He was like, man, you better, you better put Playboy out. And so P was like, yo, it's time for you. You It's time your turn, you know, mm -hmm. to, to come out. You know, you got to go work. And so for me, man, Kel knew I was different. You know, that's why, you know, my album was totally different. And so the pressure was like, you know, I can't mess this up. Mm -hmm. Everybody short so far. Everybody doing over 100,000 the first week. I can't mess up. So. It was really, and it took me maybe a couple of songs to get into the album when Kale was like, you not being yourself. And what he did, nobody noticed, 
we left Baton Rouge and he said, let's go to New Orleans, you know, go get something to eat at this spot, go get a hot sausage and cheese sandwich, whatever at Jeans Po' Boys, which was real big. And he was like, man, let's go get his hot sausage. Then we rode around, we hit this spot, that spot. They let him DJ, you know, I'm sitting in there drinking Long Island ice tea, shit I used to do, you know, and you know, it was like, and then we we had this thing, man, that sometimes, you know, and I said it, you know, money got tight and we used to only have enough money to get jungle juices, like in small bags of ruffles, the two, mm. two bags, three bags for a dollar. Mm -hmm. Me and them used to share those three bags, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, in a honey bun or whatever, <laughs> you know, because we had kids and he told mm -hmm. me I stopped hustling. He told me I couldn't hustle no more. He wasn't going to mess with me. So, you know, me, I tried our jobs, even though that's how I ended up going in the credit card thing, because I got a job at a bank one night and learned their system. And that's another story. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, now we got a few dollars because we had no limit. But he made he brought me back to the city for one night. And we just did what we did when we didn't have nothing. Mm. And so once he brought me back up there, you know, it was easier for me to get through the album. And Fiend was always there. And so for me, I just start being me. You mm. know, I, I, I didn't try to say, okay, let me do what P do. Let me do what C do. You know, it's like, I'm going to do me. And, you know, with life insurance, we turned it in, but we turned in a whole bunch of songs that, we that didn't make the album that I even felt was better than the songs that was on there. Mm. And so it was, it was, it was nerve wracking because when, when I was done, you know, P have a good memory, man. When I first came up there, I used uh -oh. to keep a picture of, of the same bubble eye Lexus Jay Z was leaning on a dead presidents in my wallet. You know, that was my thing of what I want in life. I'll take a picture and put it in my wallet. And you know, you keep your wallet with you everywhere. <laughs> Uh -huh. So when time go on, you know, I get up there. P got this bubble eye Lexus. He got the same one. I'm like, man, God telling me something. Mm. So he found out I took a picture of the new Corvette that was the body style change in 97. So when I turned life insurance in, he was like, come meet me over here by, the, by this car place. So I'm thinking, you know, he about to get something. And he gave me the keys to it, you know, mm. to it. And, you know, it was just like, like, damn, I'm actually really doing this. It's legal. Mm -hmm. And I got this car. And it's you and never told us about that story. Cause I remember you told me that yeah. you had your eye on a white Corvette. Yeah. You never said that part though. Yeah, he gave it to me, you know. And first I asked him because he was teaching me business. I said, Who name is it? And he said, Is it your name? You know <laughs> right, I mean? right. He said, You earned this, you know what I'm saying? And man, it's crazy. <laughs> I got in trouble two days later because I drove up and down New Orleans. I want everybody to see me like, bitch, I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> y'all ain't never seen. Then I just went straight to Virginia by my daughter. So P comes back in town and he like, man, they love and serve album. Where you at? Mm. The Bad Roy, I say, I'm in Virginia. He mm. said, by yourself? I said, yeah, I drove to Virginia to see my daughter. He was like, bro, if you don't get your ass back down here, I'll bring them down here, come back home. Cause by then no limit was popping and I drove up there by myself and he's like, he didn't want us really by ourselves, you know? And so once, you know, life insurance came out and it made, you know, a lot of people don't know, you mentioned a part on there. It was, my album was one of the first rap albums to make the R and B charts. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. no, a lot of people don't know that did number happen. five. Yeah. It you did that number happen. five. Yeah. You know? And so that's amazing. It, and you know, once it was done, man, and 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 I saw the response, you know, and I think the only mistake that was ever made, and I learned a lot from it. We did best friend be my lady, the video, right? But P mm -hmm. wanted to do having it so close first. Mm -hmm. And if I'd have probably did having it so close, it'd have been even bigger, you mm -hmm. know. And and so, you know, I mean, we, you know, it was just something that. I'm proud of because man, I was scared to death. Like yeah. I never scared of nothing but but God in my life, you know, and, and losing my mother or something and my kids, but I was scared like I can't fuck this up. And it, it was it was pressure. What made y'all do the album cover like that? Because that album cover is historic. Well, you know, me, I had a concept and you know, 
and P is, P is a genius, man, at things that he do. And, you know, I believe that, you know, and people don't know the reason behind the album, you know, the, the life insurance. Okay. And I'm going to ask y'all questions. Y'all just got to answer it and you'll know the reason behind it. When you're born, you get a what? Death certificate? I mean, no, birth certificate. No, I said birth a death certificate. certificate. A birth certificate. That's on paper, right? That's paper. Yeah. Your social security card is paper, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you die, you get a what? Death certificate. certificate. Paper, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. We put money down, they got a life insurance that's what paper, right? Yeah, and what is money? Paper, right? Paper, right. yeah. You're doing life from the time you come in until the time you leave is chase paper, you know what I'm saying? Like your, your life is life insurance, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Your life is life insurance, life insurance yeah. on everything is about paper, you yeah. know what I'm mean? saying? And so, you know, his thing was Skullface had become president of Def Jam. And he mm -hmm. felt like I was a dark artist like Scarface. So he was like, I'm going to put the mist in front of you. Because it was always serve on. You mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? And I'm going to put the mist in front of you because he's stepping away. You're going to take that spot. You got that type of music. Mm -hmm. And so the crazy part about it, he said, I know what we're going to do. So he tells me, you know, put this suit on. We go to the place. He said, they ain't going to tell me now. I didn't even know what was going on. He said, like, lay, just lay down. Close your eyes like you're dead. I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> So me being me, I'm, you know, I'm gonna listen to him. I'm laying there like that or whatever, what not. And so then he's like, go take the pictures like you usually dress. And me back then, I was into my khakis and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so the picture you see me with, that's how I normally dress. Scullies and, yeah. and, and, and khakis or whatever, you know, I was just young and wild. And so we go the next day and this dude pull up with a, a hearse on gold D's. I'm like, he said, come on, get in. I'm like, I'm not getting in there, bro. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm boy, like, I'm bro. still alive. What are you oh, talking and I asked, about? We got beef. I mean, what kind of shit you pulling up in the hearse? <laughs> <But no. laughs> and he was like, hey, bro, just come on. We're going to shoot your commercial. I'm like, what? And then I was like, bro, is anything in the back? He said, no, ain't nothing in the back, bro. Just get in the car. <laughs> so we go in this strange neighborhood in Cali. This is how gangster he was with shit. Like this little kind of middle class neighborhood. We jump out. He got the camera, dude. He say, look, you're going to stand there, walk up, and open the door. And that's how my first commercial was. I opened the door where the casket should be. Now, the first time, he, he laughed his ass off. I, I opened it lightly and looked because it was something. The casket was in there. I'm like, man, I'm done with you, bro. I don't play like that. So yeah. I opened the door, and that's where you saw the album flip out. You mm. know, I, I ever find that commercial. You know, so that was his thing. And he was like, bro, this album, gone. when I saw the cover, he then added a female there, a woman there, like somebody mom. Mm. And my mother first saw the cover. My mother cried. She was like, oh, you going to die? I'm like, no, I'm not. Ma, that's just an album cover. Mm. So, and and it, it, it set the tone, though. You know, yeah. that's his idea. Yeah, and y'all, uh, No Limit, legendary with the album covers, man. Y'all the first ones that came out with, like, the color cases. Oh, you know yeah. What I mean? The plastic with the cover, the the, the color cases, man. Y'all really changed the game with the marketing. I mean, like up here, we didn't get the commercial. You know what we got? We bought one CD, and we got what was coming out later inside of the CD. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even if you didn't like the artist, you buying it anyway because you got to know what's the next one's coming. Exactly. That's so it was like, you know, save money. <laughs> You like no limit, you got all of them because you like, and plus, if you like no limit, no matter who was your favorite artist, you got a new updated verse for them every week. Yeah. And you didn't get that from the East Coast or somebody. It's like, you know, if you listen to Jay Z, you like Jay Z, you listening to that same album, you know what I'm saying, all year until he come yeah. out with another one. But if you like Mr. Serve on No Limit, he got a new verse on a new yeah. album every week. Yeah. So it's like, oh, you know, and whoever your I favorite rapper way, is. Though, however, like, however y'all marketed it was It was amazing. genius. It was, it was genius. It was honest. genius. You know, he, 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 he planned all that, man. His thing was to smother the industry. But also, P was cheap, man. Yeah. Being, like, cheap in a smart financial way. Resourceful. So, yeah. yeah. Resourceful. Yeah, you know, he, he realized, like, if, if a source layout was $12,000, right? Mm-hmm. 
P was like, I'm gonna put my album on that one page, and then the other page, I'm gonna, I'm gonna promote y'all full albums. Right. I have no stipulations of. Well, yeah, P, you know, okay, you can't put this on that and that. You just saved 12000 for the layout. And mm -hmm. so he would still spend maybe 24000 for two layouts, you know, and promote with what? That's 10, 10 albums. Mm -hmm. Which did it regular, you know, that would have been 120000 mm -hmm. He always was like out hustling the game. And, and what he believed in is, an uh, army gonna always, you know, and we all, you know, and you know, I've told you guys this, you know, a king, a king will not rule, we can never rule his kingdom without an army. A right. king become a king without an army. And so he understood that that we was gonna always, we was gonna be more than you guys, you know, something that Wu Tang really should have did. They the yeah. ones that really did it, but they only put Method Man out and maybe, you know, uh Raekwon or somebody instead of going with every one of them and then coming back with a Wu-Tang album. If you really look at it, that's what we did. Put a No Limit Soldiers album out or a Downside yeah. album. Then everybody get their albums out all the way up and through the year, you know, and different through the months. And then, bam, another TRU will come out or, or yeah. another Limit Soldiers album will come out. Yeah. And with us, we was going to smother you. If Puffy came out, who was a Big time artists at the time, P gonna come out. Then the next week, yeah. C Murder come out. Then the week after that, I'm gonna come out. Now it's three against one. Right. Yeah. We and, just work. Some, and just speaking of some of the albums and things you've put out, so I'll start with in 2000, you put out your first independent album, which was War is Me, part one, Battle Decisions. And then also in 2001, you released your fourth album, which was Take a Sip. That um and then also in 2003 you put no more uh no more questions out. My I'm just favorite. going on a list because I want to huh. My favorite. That's my favorite. Album. <laughs> I'm just going on a list because I don't know if people really know your resume yeah. when I say you deep into the music. So I really want to. I'm reading them off because I want to yeah. give your respect. I want to yeah. give your. You know, I'm just shooting out there like you really put out some classics. You know, and in 2000 mm -hmm. um I'm sorry in 2000 and. It says 2008 through 2009, you released Life Insurance 2, Heart Music, and Gangsta One More Time. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your favorite album. No More Questions. <laughs> because No More Questions was, it was deep for me. Because at that time, I walked away from everything. And, you know, and it was like, I was happy raising my kids, bringing them to school every day, going pick them up. You know, at the time I was married and she was going to school. So it was like, you go find your career. I'm going to stay home. We got the bills and whatever. And, you know, it was like I would watch. And, and, and the funny thing, I was around in Texas, the Zeros. And I would see Skullface. I would see Slim Thug, you know, and be around these guys. And and that's when I started finding myself and saying, I'm going to be myself. And mm. rap, I usually rap. And this was the first album that I had no one over me. Even that war is me, even though they gave me a budget, you know, I still had people over me, you know, yeah. when things you like had full control. Yeah. And this was what I wanted to do. And, you know, and I think that was like that beginning of me finally rapping the way I want to rap, you know, and, and the songs on that was deep because now I was seeing P life, you know, I was getting up, going to the studio, you know, coming back in late, getting up, making sure the kids get to school, you know, and then making sure my producers and, you know, my team was paid and taken care of, getting on flights to Cali, coming back, you know, then going to New Orleans, checking on my mom, making sure they straight, you know, and was given like, you know, money up front. And I just decided to put a whole project together, you know, and, and the way it was being done, you know, it was like it meant a lot. You know what I'm saying? And I was taking chances like he took on KLM with two producers. Out, well, one producer, you know what I'm saying? And then another guy, Jeff, who was like my guy, like P. had Boz. It was like mimicking mm -hmm. that whole situation. And that album, I just loved the songs that I did. And the sad part about it, that label, I don't know what they were doing. You know what I'm saying? They gave me and Sticky Fingers a bunch from Onyx a bunch of money. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And you know, to put albums out. And then we both showed up like a week later after our albums come out, just to how to see about the numbers. And the door was locked, the empty office was empty. Mm -hmm. you know, we were given our 
uh the company that it went through you know they paid they was paying us as we have the album make money it was the label was nowhere to be found um, mm. hey but it, you yeah. got your check <laughs> hey at least they, at least they got know, the check before and, they left god yeah, is good you laugh about something <laughs> Hey, and then also after that, you managed to release more projects during like 2000, 2013 and further on with mm -hmm. uh, Street Dreams and Fallen Soldier. And I know numerous mixtapes and projects. Mm -hmm. What kept you creative what, and what kept you going for so long? Like even now, what's pushing you? Uh, The respect. The respect factor. And, you know, a lot of times I sit back, might take a year off and, and might help other people. And then but at the same time, I'm perfecting. I'm always working. You know what I'm saying? I'm always working. Like right now, I can go downstairs and I've accumulated um, outside the albums I'm about to put out that you guys know about. I got a folder with maybe like almost, I think about 85 songs. I'm still doing the song a day. You know, I might not. That's what's up. And we see you working. We see you yeah. working all the time. And man, ain't no worker like Serv. I yeah, tell you, Serv a different I, worker. I, ain't gonna lie. I think he got a little Mexican. Uh, it's real when it comes to this music. Because I mean, <laughs> you know, the pandemic was rough for us. But Serv, you kept me on my P's and Q's, man. Serv sent me songs. Vix, get on this. Get on it. Man, I wasn't even rapping through hey, the hey, pandemic. Sir. <laughs> hey, bro, you don't even know now. He get on my nerves. I be threatening to tell him. <laughs> I'm going to tell Sir about you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Call me. Yeah. You sent me them songs that kept me on my P's and Q's. But let's talk a No Limit reunion tour, man. How that tour treat you, man? Y'all selling out shows, man. And that's the most it's present, crazy. craziest thing that you have going on right now. Like, that's to the public that people can see and be a part of. Like that No Limit reunion tour, selling out, going from city to city, state to state, just killing it, crashing it. How's that? Like, tell how's us that, about that. How's that different from life insurance y'all touring, selling out every show <laughs> versus y'all selling out now? Is it even a difference? Is it a difference? <laughs> I mean, you know what? It it's it's more beautiful now, man. I mean, because when you you know what I'm saying able to say these people have grew with us and we still packing houses when you know when when the young guys be saying you know old guy get out the way you know what i'm saying right and so when you got that type of situation going on it's a beautiful thing man you know what i'm saying so i i love it for the simple fact you know we just proving the point. Excuse me, y'all. I'm doing this. Don't be mad with me. Yeah. I'm saying my, my phone was about to die. We keep it We keep it Look, tell everybody. Yeah, tell everybody out there. We keep it gangster, man. Fuck. We for keep it real. For real. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, but what it really was, man. To be back on tour, you know, when we know it's a young person's game right now. You know what I'm saying? But it's so beautiful to see that we did the right music and, you know, we did right by our fans because we're a moment in their life. And I tell and I've told you guys that make the music that you're going to be a moment in somebody's life, man. Thanks. Where You know, when your music come on, they remember the best time in their life. You know what I'm saying? And so. We're proving that we were that for a lot of people. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, y'all are. Y'all yeah. living proof. Y'all living proof that legacy matters. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Standing for something matters. Being yourself matters. Uh, Pushing a narrative that you want to control matters. So shouts out to, to you, you, Mr. Sarbon. Shouts out to the No Limit family. I wish you know we got so here, much. We we're gonna have to get served every every yeah, every he, season. He always gonna have something. We got we gotta get him every season, but we gotta keep it so you good. We just wanna give you your flowers. We wanna tell you that y'all doing an amazing job. Shouts out to you and to the No Limit family. Keep pushing. But at this moment, we just want you to tell us everybody else what you got going on, what they need to tap into, and anything, to and you. how to follow you, bro. Oh man, um. Right now, of course, you can find me on um, 
on IG at the real Mr. Servon. Really, in on every social media, it's the real Mr. Servon. And right now, man, I'm going into some big things, man. We we launching my brand, my favorite. We got out my own way, uh, headphones. I was about to say, I saw that, man. Shout yeah. out to you. Hey, hey I'm going to get me a but, pair, bro. I'm getting me a pair. Immediately. Yeah, I need my, yeah. You know this is going to be the first interview I announce it. So oh, yeah, man, I get what's the up? Exclusive. Hey, you know, you know I'm a cop mine, yeah. so I'm but this, man, mine. The, the thing, man, I'm about to change the game. I'm about to bring money back to artists because we're developing a very sophisticated app you know that you know when they buy your headphones people that are big fans of tvix and miss you know miss dean and they get your headphones which is a collector's item it's going to connect to that app and all your music that's on there oh, unreleased yeah. music they got to buy it. they'll be they'll buy the headphones but then buy your music and your money will be right there for you. You Let's know what go. I'm saying? So, so, so shout out to you for shout being an innovator. Shout out to the app. And, yeah. and, make, and make sure when the app launches, you, you let me know we get you back on the show, man, oh, yeah. so we can blow it oh, up. Oh, definitely, oh, yeah. man. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, hell, y'all going to have y'all headphones. So, you know, you y'all yeah, know. Sure. I'm going <laughs> you know, to be rocking my chair. You know, I'm going to be rocking we, my headphones. That, from damn Mr. right. Servo. You know, you, right. You know, think about all the young ladies out there that won't be around like you gonna have pink headphones with Miss Vic face on it, you know, Miss yeah. <laughs> Dean face on it. And so, you know, I mean, we got we going across the board, man. We got my favorite uh wireless company, you know what I'm saying, which I am in the middle of finishing up developing my own phone, which I'm gonna call it the, the first phone of the culture to go to the get to the bag for um phone. I'm gonna have everything about the culture apps on it. You know, it's going to be a hell of a phone with a great data plan, unlimited data plan, you know, because I want to make it affordable for guys getting out of jail that hope that need yeah. need a phone to be able to get a job. And, you know, for single mothers, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a great phone, but it's going to have everything but the culture. We're going to have, if y'all got an app for y'all show, it's going that app going to come on the phone with it. You know, we're going to have earbuds. We're going to have the speakers that go with That's it for dope. your favorite artists. And then we have an uh we just finished up the smart watch, you know what I'm saying? That we gonna have dumb. a watch, you know well, what I'm saying? You're moving big in the technology world. Yeah. Shouts out to you, shouts out to you. Yeah, we going through it, man. And then we got my favorite credit service. We just did a deal. Uh my 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 credit service company, man. We just did a huge deal with a lending firm, man. And I got all the secrets now, man, to come back to the community, you know. And if your credit is not right, we know how to get it right. Okay. And then you'll be able to go get you 30, 40, 50,000, set your company up and, you know, get you the right money to start your company, teach you how to get your company started and then market it. You know, we, we taking it back to the community and, and getting people to understand the financial aspects of living by credit. You know what I'm saying? And getting your credit together and getting your own LLC and get everything out your name. You know, and, and that's have a business. That's what I'm you know, talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what's yeah, up. We, Let's clap it up for Mr. Yeah, yeah, we Mr. definitely, Sermon. man. Thank you so much for being on this yep. platform. Thank you so much for your time. I can't definitely. wait to see all the beautiful things you have in store. Once again, y'all can follow Mr. Servon at the real Mr. Servon. The real Mr. Servon, man. Everywhere. Everywhere. And we can't I'm wait to. And we can't wait to tap in with you again, bro. When y'all right. coming back on the road, man? If you see, they they neglected to tell you guys out there that. T Vic was the only artist <laughs> that was outside the No Limit camp that actually came on stage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know, so, yeah. you know yeah. y'all got y'all got to come back to some shows, man. Everything is is moving along great, and is is prime for y'all to come, man, to come to some shows, man, and and. And come on back and get what you're getting family, ready. Man. You know how we move, bro. We we all we about structure. We, we all about setting up. There. When we come Hold back, up. we ain't gonna never leave. You hear me? I'm about to put <laughs> I'm about to put your husband on point. Everybody out there, man, man, this guy was supposed to shoot a movie, and I'm telling you, this drip trick movie gonna be the shit. Oh yeah. If he if we ever shoot the movie, oh, man, yeah. we got the script, we got everything. Mister Mister Millionaire Trillionaire wear himself, you know. They they supposed to shoot. We the movie. putting it together this summer, sir. I, I put it on everything I love. It's gone. We gonna shoot it. Oh, this it's summer. gonna happen. It's happening. Hey, we bro, I'm talking I'm, about it too. I'm losing weight, bro, so I can wear the small shirt in the movie, man. <laughs> you know. We gotta keep our time, bro. Hey, look, I'm gonna tap in with you tomorrow. We gonna talk about that because we definitely gonna shoot that movie. We love you, All man. Right. Stay blessed. Stay getting paid. Stay successful. Yeah.
And we can't wait to tap it with you again, bro. And yeah, uh, Pac-Man album coming with y'all on it. Peace. Pac-Man, 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 Pac-Man. Pac -Man, Pac -Man. Yeah. Yeah.